Actually, wow. Okay, Providence was last month. Never mind. Yeah. I thought we were almost in August here. But yeah. Um, it's pretty close to August. Time flies when you're having fun. Trust me. Bruce Cowley playing against Drew Levin. Um, Bruce does have that Grand Prix top four from Providence uh, last month. And now we're going to see Jason Ford start off here with a Forest and an Elvish Mystic. Yeah, Jason's a uh, solid green-white aggro deck. Elvish Mystic dies to ring flush on turn one. Probably being the black-white deck. I've seen quite a few of those today based on the synergy between Aromancer and Chronic Sickness. Uh, Jason Ford has no two-drop. Cowley doesn't have a two-drop either. Both players representing planes in their second color. Jason Ford has a Griffin Sentinel on three. You see Cowley's deck here. He's 10 swamp, 7 planes. Um, so he's not the mono black deck that we were getting pretty used to seeing today. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, the cards you look for here are corrupt or something like that. He doesn't really have that. So if he's black, white, you know, you kind of almost, you, you almost immediately think of, um, you know, does he have the Orm answers, the Quack yeah. Sicknesses, stuff like that. He has one Quack Sickness and one Orm answer, but it looks like he's just a black, white, good stuff deck. Yeah. So you see a Master of Diversion here played for him, but Jason Ford has quite the trump in the form of a 4-4 for 4, four, four in yeah. Rumbling Baylock. That card is big. Oh, oh, it's big. Pacifism takes down the Baylock. Yeah. Master of Diversions taps down the Griffin and gets him for two. Life controls are 19 to Steven, 18 Jason Ford. Oddly enough, no, not even a Blightcaster here. Jason flings another Baylock onto the battlefield. Yeah. Has it's he been attacking with the Griffin? I feel like yeah, he's been nudging in. Yeah. I'll have to double check. And we will get those. Uh, we'll get those life totals updated for you guys in just a moment. Make sure they're accurate here before we do put them up. Five mana, and that is more than a rare. It's a mythic rare. Good one. We haven't seen that one today. We have not seen Archangel of Thune yet today. So this is the five mana three four, life link. When gains life, it does a Gavin Township impersonation. So we'll see if Ford has like a pacifism or yeah, a plummet, he and he does. All right. So Ford is very. I'm excited about his cards. Yeah. Throwing them on the table. Yeah, Wanted to be at dinner hours ago. Yeah, we'll get that thing on the table. We'll get another Griffin Sentinel on the table and pass the turn back is what Ford is going to do. Now, there still is that trigger, so if he gains life, that's a glorious answer. Yep. Yeah, the trigger still does exist. Does he have other ways to gain life in his deck, or are we uh, looking at a dead card? Yeah, I'm kind of looking for... Knights. Yeah, Child of Knight. I was trying to see if he has Sol Solemn Offering in his main deck, but he has two in his sideboard, does Stephen Cowley. So... Not anything all that impressive. And Cali's deck is Mark of the Vampire. It, yeah, Mark of the Vampire is one. He doesn't, you know, his deck isn't anything insane. Uh, oddly enough, a card that we've seen be pretty bad most of the day in Lifebane Zombie. He actually does have. Yeah, now we see a the Nightwing. First time shade. it's been good. Yeah, this is the it, first time. This that, is like the this is the sh you know showcase. Yeah, you got green white creatures versus Lifebane Zombie. Mm -hmm. Now here's a Nightwing shade here for Cali. He's going to pass the turn back, and Rumbling Bale is going to come in along with these Griffin Sentinels. It looks like. Yeah, this is a uh, you know Nightwing shade. Can block one of the one power guys, mm -hmm. but yeah, just a little short of pumping it up to kill one. No trick to play around for a single black man outside of Vile Rebirth. Uh, Ring Flush in the graveyard. Oh, Ring Flush, okay. Yeah, and I mean, Kali does actually have two of those uh, yeah. in his deck. I already used one. I think I'd gladly trade a one-three flyer for a Ring Flush. Yeah, if you're if you're Ford. Yeah. Okay. I mean, also the Ring Flush. You know, he's gonna attack with the Bale anyways. Double block Ring Flush. Sure. Looks like Kali just has one card left in his hand too. Yeah, he's been uh, advancing the board, and Jason's been playing bigger creatures. So Nightwing Shade blocks. Jason Ford, Briar Briar Pack Pack Alphas, pumps it up. Yeah. Shade down. So this is a this is a really nice draw here for Cowley Ford. down to 13. Yeah, there's two 4-4s four for Ford. You know, this was the key we were saying to the green decks. Like, this is how you're supposed to win. Yep. So Kali's going to draw a card. He draws a Show of Valor. He's got Normancer in his hand. Also, it looks like he has a Corpse Hauler right now yep. as well. And as good as Corpse Hauler has been over the course of the day, it cannot return a pacified creature. Nope. And now he's a little under the gun and has to, you know, maybe not have the time to Corpse uh, haul back anything relevant in time to yeah. stabilize. You know, Nightwing Shade is card we've been talking about all day, but if you're being pressured this fast, this is why it wasn't the best the first time. Mm -hmm. Just kind of fell underneath the things that were attacking into it on turn 5 or 6 and yeah. needed something bigger to stay alive. Yeah, you can't forget, it, it is a 5 mana 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that, that's, that's what it is. It, it, you know, if you get to untap with it, it's fantastic, but it is a 5 mana 2-2. Two, two. Steve Cowley down to 8 life already. Jason Ford at 18 with 9 power active. 
Got to be feeling pretty good if you're Ford right now. Yeah. I don't even know what the last like last card in his hand is either. Let's see. Kali gonna tap three mana. So now there's Oromancer. Passing the turn, yeah. giving up the show of valor. What's this Oromancer take down the four four on the attack? Jason Ford draws his card. Is that a show of valor? I that? think that was what he drew this turn. Yeah. Jason Ford thinking, thinking, shoving. Yeah, one way. Yeah. It's the one way highway. Everybody in there. I mean, it puts the onus on Kali to do everything here. Make, the, make the proper blocks, but read, read Ford for whatever trick he thinks he has. It puts all the pressure I mean, even on if, Kali. Even if Kali had a trick of some kind, Jason Ford's still getting it for a significant amount of damage. Like, Kali's pretty close to dead. All right, so let's see what the blocks are going to look like. Again, he's got a show of valor in his hand. He's going to have to use it wisely. If Ford has a show of valor in his hand, he can actually use it offensively. Yes. Push through some damage. He's short to... Uh, Giant Growth is lethal, and Show of Valor is one short. So there's a Show of Valor for mm -hmm. Kali. Jason Ford, yeah, sure, my guy's dead. Whatever, you're at three. Let's see if he's got a follow-up. Yeah, okay, so he has two guys. He's just gonna <laughs> I mean, those are two pretty yeah, good sure. guys. Jeez, in, in the 3-3 in the three, three Tusker and a Master Diversions. Goodness. Do we have the out? Does he have planner, are you looking for planner cleansing? Checking for planner cleansing. Nope. nope. Cleans up his lands yep. instead. That's Jason Ford's it. sleeveless deck. One out. Yeah, Jason Ford's gonna win game number one over Stephen Cowley. One zero. Pretty easy that game. So we'll cut over to another one here. It might be Levin versus Cow versus Cowley brother. It could be you versus Ford. You versus Rose, excuse me. Looks like the looks like actually the you versus Rose match. Yeah, they are done with game number one. So we'll figure out who won there. And it is Kyle, Kyle Rose, Rose. Up again. Jason Ford does win game number one. It looks like with any luck, we'll be able to move over to Levin. Yep, he's scooping up his permanent, so we'll find out who won that game. And it looks like Drew did. Yeah. He tapped himself in the shoulder. Okay. Looks like a signal. You know what that means, alright? That means we could have actually cut away and asked a trivia question. Right. Unbelievable. Psh. Unbelievable. You want to run back with the trivia question one? You know what? You can. Yeah. Alright. So the trivia question for uh, six months of premium. Tweet at hashtag SCG premium for this one. We've been talking about a specific black common creature that's been dominating the skies all day. You know, Sarah Angel's been thrown under the bus in front of it at one point, I believe. Yeah, it actually did happen. Yeah. So, uh, what black common flyer has been uh, shockingly awesome all day? Yeah. Wasn't awesome the first time around? Was it just fine? This time, pretty good. Huh? Tweet your answer. Hashtag SCG Premium will be giving it away after this match concludes. You see Rose's team behind right now. Certainly not over, but Kyle Rose up one, Ford and Levin up one on their side. And again, right now, you, Ford and Levin are the team, you know, they, they're the number one seed. They yeah. haven't lost a match, so, you know, they are, quote, the team to beat yeah. in this tournament right now. That's the, the reluctant heroes. Yes, yes. <laughs> one of them is reluctant. <laughs> Mr. Ford. Jason's such a joker. It's <laughs> so <laughs> funny. <laughs> I'm unhappy to be here. Yeah, we're eight. No, who cares? Whatever. Jarvis just sits in the corner and nods. Yeah, Jarvis is sitting in the corner casting his corrupts. Yeah. They claim that he could not win a game without casting that card. But Jarvis is, uh, I believe he said he was X1 in yeah, this list. Yeah, I mean, Jarvis, Personal is, record. Jarvis is a good deck. Yeah. Yeah. All kidding aside, I mean, he's a mono black deck that has four quacks, sickness, double corrupt, diabolic tutor. Doesn't have like anything insane to find with the tutor outside of corrupt. Like he doesn't have a nightmare or something like that. But yeah, that double deck. nightmare deck from earlier. Yeah, that was a spicy meeple. Yeah, no doubt about it. You see all players sideboarding here, not even consulting with each other. You know, sometimes you see teammates consult each other about how they want to sideboard for specific matchups, but the way the game's lined up, like, all three players finished their games at the exact same time. So, you know, one player wasn't able to kind of look at, look and watch another player on their team play and say, hey, you should sideboard this for that card, because all three matches basically ended simultaneously. Yeah. So let's see, we have, uh, we have the BC, which was the green-white aggro deck versus the black-white deck. BC seat, we have Jarvis here's mono black deck against Kyle Rose's blue red deck. Uh, it's somewhat similar to. Ooh. Card we were talking about not having seen Scourge of Outcast. Yeah. The Worship and Dragon. Yeah, we have not seen that yet. Actually, this Rose's deck actually looks quite good. Yeah. He's got two copies of Marauding Mallhorn, has a Mind Sparker, the Scourge of Outcast, that new dragon, two shocks, a Shivan Dragon. 
So he's got a, a Chandra's Phoenix. Yeah, he's got Chandra's Phoenix. So he's got his team's good red cards and some blue cards. Two claustrophobia is a fantastic removal spell. An air servant. Yeah. The, two sea skites. An opportunity. A phantom warrior. Whew. Yeah, Drew sitting opposite him at the table with the similar deck. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's the, actually kind of funny because like Drew's deck has a lot of rares in it, obviously, but like Kyle's deck. For not having like all the rares in the world, his deck, like outside of like a rare heavy deck, is really really good. He's got three yeah. sensory deprivations, three train condors. I like his deck a lot. Yeah, it's uh, pretty solid. It's fun to look at too. Again, when you're when you're looking at how people evaluate cards, since this is a, limit, a brand new limited format, a card that we've seen be very good over the course of this week in this disperse. Two in Kyle's sideboard, none in his main deck. No cancel in the main deck either. That's what I really like. Wall of Frost also in Rose's sideboard. No act of treason. This isn't necessarily that card without the black cards. Mm -hmm. Three on the board. I always find it, I, I really do, I find it really interesting how people evaluate cards at the beginning of a format where, you know, some people think that, you know, a card like Disperse isn't fantastic, others just are boarding it in for specific matchups. You see, in Rose's sideboard, he has a wild ricochet as well. Not actually gonna, it, it's not actually gonna be the best against Jarvis because he has, like, Corrupt. Quack Sickness. And Quack Sickness. And you can't, Quack Sickness is an enchantment, can you ricochet that? Let me double check, can yeah. pull that one up? So I'm pretty sure it's spells only, I don't think you can ricochet. Um, a wild uh, ricochet of quack sickness. You can ricochet except it's not bad. I guess it's, it's just like, counter spell. It's just like counter spell. Yeah, it's not it's great. Like yeah, you don't have swamps. Oh, yeah, yeah, and <coughs> yeah. Rick, wild ricochet is instant or sorcery. Okay. So I mean, I wish that it was good. Run. Like I think it would be awesome if like Kyle Rose is playing against Drew Levin and they're in the blue red mirror. Jeez, yeah, yeah, th and, and like Levin has a volcanic geyser in his deck. Table A, we've got a uh, got some. Naya going on over here. Looks slivers. Like slivers. Yep. Battle Sliver, Blur Sliver. Uh, not that, not actually that heavy on Slivers, but splashing for Hive Strings nonetheless. Okay. Um, against Drew Levin's Blue Red. I have all the rares in. I hope this is a good deck. Yeah, well, it has been good so far. I mean, you take a look at Bruce Cowley's deck. He's playing against Levin right now. He's got two Volcanic Geysers. He's got a Molten Birth, an Ogre Battle Driver. Um, to lay the land for a splash of the hive stirrings. Uh, Mana Sliver is also going to help mitigate that splash. He has two root walls, a predatory sliver, so he's got some good cards here. But I mean, that's how Fallout's in the board for Drew. Yeah, I mean, he might nice be one. he might be outmatched just because Drew's deck is so so powerful. <laughs> yeah, I'll play Shiver Dragon Plummet. Okay, I'll play another Shiver Dragon. We cut into the Rose Jarvis match. You see Rose coming across with a Chandra's Phoenix card that's actually pretty problematic for Jarvis. Yeah, just keeps coming back for more. Especially because Jarvis uh, doesn't have a Nightwing Shade to block it with. Yeah, does he want to go? Does he want a Quag Sickness? This? Does, can, does he think he can get a, so bad? Yeah. Does he think he can get a better use out of his Quag Sickness? But does he want to keep taking, you know, two points of damage using his Lexal as a resource? He doesn't. He's going to stick with it and just pass did, the turn back. Did he maybe board in Vile Rebirth for that? Depends on if he saw game one. It's actually a really yeah. good question. So it looks like we're mind sparking. Yep. Looks like Jarvis did a Liturgy of Blood. Probably just debating what his follow-up play here would do. Yeah. Just get this 3-2 out of the way. Yeah, I think that we, I actually think that's worth killing, too, with Liturgy of Blood. You know, depending, depending on what Jarvis's plan is, and he's going to just play a Vampire Warlord and pass a turn back. So this is exposed to a card like Shock, which Rose has two copies of in his deck. Yeah. I mean, the fact that he didn't play earlier creatures implies that he doesn't have that many things to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, possible... He's just running out the 4-2, hoping to race Giant Cockroach versus 3-2. Uh, now there's an Air Servant. He draws his card. He draws a Swamp for the turn. You're looking over his options. Definitely a better Lithogy target than the... Uh, yeah. I mean, they're actually both pretty good <coughs> Lithogy targets, honestly. So if you're your Jarvis, you just shove with 4 2 force. See if he trades. I think, trades, I think that's where you start. Yeah. yeah. I just can't imagine that, that Rose would ever block here. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, we might as well test him. Yeah, spot check. Yeah. So the interesting thing is that if Rose has something like an opportunity, making this attack, you know, if he makes a block, he definitely wants to make that block. Mm -hmm. Wow, he is going to block. He's going to trade air service for the Vampire Warlord. Okay. And now Jarvis is going to follow that up with a Minotaur Abomination. So the 4-6 is in. I'm a little bit surprised to see air servant trade there. Depends on the contents of Rose's hand. Yeah. What he's trying to set up. Train Condor. Okay. First play for the turn. No follow-up play. Now holding, Jarvis has the biggest Minotaur. Yep. Can't attack, of course, because due to the 4-6. 
Jessica has to turn back. Jarvis looking at his hand, looks like he has Plague, Sickness, Liturgy of Blood, and Corrupt are the cards that I think I've seen. Whew, all good ones. Stacked hand to go with this 4 6. Funny that 4 6 just holds <laughs> down the fort. Really yes. does. It's so big. There's your Liturgy. Liturgy of Blood on 3 2. Does that resolve? Negate. Negate says no. Jarvis gonna probably send in with his 4 6. Not blocking next turn. Yeah. In for four we go. Yeah. There's not really like a, a haste guy to punish you for that attack. Yeah. No lightning elementals. It's a card I miss. Yeah, it's a card you normally see in base sets. Jarvis, you dropping down. I got a ten now. Yeah. Kyle Rose passing. Representing opportunity. So you draw six cards for the turn. He's at ten. Rose at sixteen. Minotaur Abomination. Ready to give the beats. Yeah. Yeah. Four six. Very respectable beat down. Hey, he's just behind right now. I mean, Jar currently he's on a, he's on a two turn clock. Now, of course, that means for that to work, he'd have to have nothing. Right. And we know he has. He, we know he has more than nothing. He just figure out how he wants. We just have to figure out how he wants to use his cards right now. Staring on the board, debating. You know, do I want to corrupt? Do I want to see the corruptor's face? I like that line, personally. So Quag Sickness, the 3-2. Three attacks. No counter spell. Interesting. I might have, uh, might have attacked first. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. There's opportunity. Yeah. That's what we thought he might have. So three and four. Yeah. So let's see what Rose is going to add to his hand now. Opportunity is such a backbreaker. Yeah. Negate looks like, it looks like Negate was one of the cards that he drew off of that as well. So Really important. Are there two in his deck? I don't know, see. Yeah, two in his side board. Board in both ends. They're fantastic against Jarvis' deck. Right. So there's Claustrophobia to take care of the 4 6. Minotaur's in the box. There's an island. Two, three. Conveniently able to leave the gate up. Plays a Phantom Warrior. Passes the turn back. Jarvis down to eight life. Yeah. Two turn clock now. Things have really, really changed in this game. It looked like a game that you may have had in hand. And, you know, the thing that really changed this game around, too, I think, is that, you know, that trade with the Air Servant yeah, looks think, really good now. Yeah, yeah, especially, you know, if Jarvis had liturgy there, the Air Servant would be down. Uh, and like, ooh, another Minotaur Abomination. It's like he would have gotten his liturgy in around a counter. Mm -hmm. That would have been pretty important. He tried to sneak through some damage in what looked like a situation so, where Rose wouldn't block, but he did. To be so, fair, the uh, Mind Sparker would stop that attack. Sure. For a long time. Sure. So, it's not 100 percent wrong. It's just like one of those things where it, you weren't sure why it happened, and now you know. Yeah. So Jarvis down to four. He's gonna fire off the corrupt and gonna get negated. That's gonna be the end of this. Yeah, I mean that looks like that's probably gonna be the outcome. There's your corrupt. There's your negate, and that is Kyle Rose winning that match over Jarvis U two games to zero. So it is on Jason Ford and Drew Levin if they want to move on. Impressive, impressive win there by Kyle Rose. Yeah. Very quick, very decisive against Jarvis U's uh, solid mono black deck. He definitely had a matchup advantage, though. Yeah. He had all the good blue ones. Uh, Rose's deck, Rose's deck lo looks quite good. Yeah. You know, for not having rares, of course. Like, his deck is quite powerful. Yes. For some reason, I have a feeling that things might come down here to the forward Cowley match again. We're going to move over to Levin and Cowley. But with how strong Levin's deck is, not to say Bruce Cowley can't win, but... It sure is an uphill climb when you're playing against a deck that has that many rares. As we cut oh, over and you see, yeah, that's a good one. You see Chase Memory Adept in play for Drew, along with a Wall of Frost and the Elemental Token. Yeah, from a young Pyromancer. Mm -hmm. Chase on four counters, having just hit the battlefield. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Chase on two turns to kill. Tick tock. Looks like one heck of a clock. Kelly, there's nothing really in green and red to beat a wall of frost. <laughs> like, 07 is yeah, it's huge. Yes. It's huge okay. against green. And even if he, like, has the pump spell or burn spell and runs the root wall in, that root wall doesn't get to attack the next turn. It looks like he may have an enlarged in his hand right now. That would take out the Jace. But, uh, 
If I remember the chat, yes. Enlarge, getting cast on the root wall, which is also getting pumped. So that's going to turn into a 9-9. 11-11. 11-11? 7-4. Yeah, you're right. 11-11, thank you. 9-9 nine, nine static, plus 2, plus 2 makes it 11-11. He's going to attack with Jace. And he has to block, so... He well, he, block, he, he attacks with both, so yeah. the Jace is exactly dead. Yeah. So, if he didn't have the deadly recluse, it has to be blocked, but it doesn't say by everything. Yeah. So, elemental token Eleven, throws nine, itself six, under the bus. Four, five, four. Yep. Yeah. So, Jace fights the dust. So, we move right along here. So, what's our next right? <laughs> Eleven yeah. gonna fire out a uh, Shivan Dragon. Oh yeah, sure. So now you have to answer this one first. <laughs> one card left in hand. Yeah, I, I like that. We we dealt half of the damage to his deck, so we're just gonna deal the rest to his face. Yeah. You see, Kali draws another land. He has a forest and a mountain in his hand right now. Does of the course, deadly recluse. Yeah, I was gonna say the deadly recluse is here to make things a little problematic for Eleven. See if he has a removal spell. You know, if I don't see a removal spell in his hand, but if I was Eleven, I may have just ran the messenger Drake out there. If you don't have a removal spell. Let it trade off there. Yeah. Okay. Looks like he's a frost breath though. I'm not, is that another Shivan Dragon? It's a pitch burn double. Oh. Yeah. I thought the same. I got really excited yeah. for a second. I thought the same. Only appropriate to play two Shivan Dragons against brothers. So. Shoo going over his options. I don't feel like Frost Breath is the right one just yet. I think we're gonna milk that one for a little yeah, more. I think damage. you can probably pick a better spot. I think, yeah. you know, you. Can, I think he's in a situation now. He's sitting at a high life total that he can actually just build a board here. Because you know, Messenger the thing Drake. that he can do is he plays Messenger because he can just outclass Kali's cards, yeah. presumably. So it looks like Steven evened it up and won a piece in the middle. And uh, your prediction of going to three there yeah. and that being the deciding factor. Might... I think that's the big one. I really do. Yeah. Like, Ford took down that first game pretty easily, but, you know, Stephen Colley's deck is a lot better than it played in game number one. Yes. There's another deadly recluse. Two is still enough to frost breath. Yep. Eleven draws. I'm with you. It might be. I think that was a... I think that was the second Shivan Dragon. Okay. That would be a nice one. I think. Yeah, he's going to pull the trigger on frost breath now. Take care of those flyers. And does the math line up perfectly for him? I think it's like close to perfect. It's over perfect. Yeah, it's, it's over perfect. Yeah, it's 11 5, 6, 11. 7, 8. Yeah, 11, 11. Yep. All of it. Fireball, you. So it's going to be 8 from the dragon, 3 from the drake, and I push Kali down to 9. So I'm going to pass the turn back. Frost Breath looking really, it, really good. It works out so that if Drew draws a land, even if Kali draws the removal spell, uh, 11 shoves in, pumps once, and then just like shrugs and plays the second shift. Sure. Two mana. That is mana weft sliver. Mana sliver. Not quite. And I've watched Drew play before. I can't imagine a world that he doesn't go for, especially drawing disperse. Yeah. Absolutely. He's in for three. Especially if Kelly didn't kill his creature last turn. Mm -hmm. He pumps one. And that is gonna do it. So Drew Levin is going to even it up for his team. He defeats Bruce Kelly two games to zero. And now it is on Jason Ford and Stephen Calley to see which one of these players is coming back tomorrow morning for a little booster draft. This was a real fast match. Yeah, yeah. It really, really was. I mean, we are looking at some, some top end players playing pretty quick magic. Uh, yeah. And the games that we're watching are they're pretty one-sided, Yeah. I feel like, so far. I mean, Jason Ford absolutely crushed Stephen Calley game one. Levin destroyed Bruce Calley that game. Um, and then Jarvis Kyle got Rose buried yeah, the yeah, other games. Yeah, Jarvis got absolutely buried by Kyle Rose. So. Uh, the, the, the thing I'm really interested to see in this penultimate game is, you know, how are the teammates going to help? Are okay. they going to slide over? What's the interaction going to be? Drew appears to be checking his cell phone. Yeah, yeah, true. Drew, Drew J I think Jason's checking his cell phone. <laughs> so, you know, I'm interested to see, you know, is, is there going to be a lot of help every single turn, uh, which is something that we've seen a little bit earlier today, or, uh, or not. So. Reese leaving. Okay, so yeah. This is, we've already seen some teammate help. Reese leaving a deck. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Kyle, the ham heater, helping out. Pretty nice of him. Uh, Bruce, not helping his brother. No. No, never. No, no love loss. <laughs> None. Maybe just unsleeve and battle Jason Ford on his own terms. <laughs> <laughs> Come down to Jason's level with the no sleeves? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure. Give it a shot, why don't you? Absolutely. If you guys are just joining us, Cedric Phillips, Ari Lax here in the booth. Star City Games live open series has made it to Richmond, Virginia. And, uh... It's been a good day so far. Nine rounds of Swiss, 174 teams, over 500 players came out to hang out with us today. And we've whittled it down to four, and we've whittled it down Four to... teams of 
Jason Ford's team. Yeah. It's Kyle Rose Kelly team. Yeah. Yeah. Back table was uh, Lloyd Kirk. Yeah, Pat Noden Walt against Murray, Visco, and Liao. As soon as we do have an update on the match, we'll certainly be bringing it to you, find out how those two teams are doing. Checking that right now. Yeah, because one of them is going to be playing against the winner of this match. I don't know. I don't know who it favors. I mean, I, like, Jason's deck is really, really good. Again, he does have three Briar Pack Alphas. He has a really strong green-white deck, but Kali's deck has all this synergy with the Sliver cards and then some you know, things outside of that. So I believe that was, uh, no, that was a black-white deck. No, other Kali. Oh, okay, my fault, my fault. Strike that, reverse it. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, you're right about Jason that. Jason also want to play this game, which is pretty important. Yeah. Stephen Kelly has the black white deck. I apologize for that misstep. He does have Life Bane Zombie, which is super good in this matchup. Also has, yeah. I mean, he's got some good cards. He's got Nightmare. He's got Senior Vampire. Um, two copies of Ring Flash. He's got two Child of Night, two Corpse Hauler, stuff like that. So, as we do have a winner, and it is going to be Matthew Murray, along with David Visco and Albert Lau. They're going to be playing tomorrow, the three seed. Yeah. So, if Kali, Kali, and Rose win. Murray, Visco, and Lau will be on the play, or have the option to be on the play in the draft tomorrow. If Levin, Ford, and you win, Levin, Ford, and you will take that option. Yeah. Just looking at some decks here. We've got a nearly mono blue deck over here in the oh, that one. That one. That's an actual dream. Yeah, it's got a Death Gaze, a Cockatrice, and a Liturgy of Blood. That's it. Don't need anything else. I played against a mono blue deck uh, at the gun egg, when I was gunslinging. Actually, Ruben Bressler ended up opening a mono blue deck in Two Headed Giant. Came against me, counter seven of my spells, yeah. and cast yeah. out. We saw one of those earlier. Yeah, that's real nice. Those are my. That's actually my. That's my favorite deck. I'm gonna try to draft it. We've got a green white beatdown deck with. We haven't seen devout invocation all day. I've just heard terrible stories about people losing to that card. I got to cast that card. Is it good? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Seraph of the sword, another one we haven't seen. I got to cast that too. Oh. is that one nice too? My gunslinging pre-release deck was pretty good. <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> Another fire shrieker, a card we've been kind of wondering about all day. But yeah. it, it seems like it's served its purpose. I am I, I'm really interested to see how that card's gonna go in booster drafts, how many seal decks it's gonna make, what effect it's gonna have on the format. This is an interesting one. We've got another black deck on this team. They opted to split the black to get the liturgy of blood into the blue deck. Okay. Blue deck needing some removal. And this is sort of your active trees and style deck. I've seen that deck a lot today. Yeah. A lot of sacrifice effects in the format. Active yeah, Treason acting as like a acting as a removal spell, kind of a burn spell as well. Yeah. Another card we've seen a lot of is Shiv's Embrace. That card. Yeah. I mean it's basically our elemental, right? Yeah. For all intents and purposes. Back to this match. Green white, black white. Ford being on the play is pretty big. Yes. And Ford has a sixteen land deck, he's got some Elvish Mystics, all that good stuff. Looks like a keepable hand for my seat. Six and seven for Kali. Got Quag Sickness as the last card he picked up. Ward's going to start off with Elvish Mystic, the proxied yeah. one. Okay. The other one was damaged. You know how it wouldn't be damaged? If you played with sleeves, <laughs> Jason. Well, it's going to be off the table very soon. Yeah. It's Ring flesh, flesh. has been wrong. Same as game one. 16 land deck for Ford, too. So those Elvish Mystics are actually quite important for his deck. He does draw a force for the turn, see if he has a plane, so he's just going to play force and pass the turn back. Yep. No Colonian Tusker. Kali draws a plane for the turn, it looks like, so he's going to play a swap and just pass the turn back. So, Ford is going to draw his card. He's going to play Master Diversions and pass the turn back. Kali draws. There's a planes. Life Bane Zombie. Oof. Jason Ford picks it up and reads it. Yeah, that one's worth reading. Cracks that a little one, smirk. That one is worth reading. And, oh, oh, boy. Jason that's is not having a fun day beating. right now. 3-1, well, Intimidate, yeah, Exiled. Yeah. Exiled. That is a beating. Shove, tap that's your guy. Cowley dropping down to 18 from his Master's actually version. Like, it actually looks like Ford might be flooding. Pass yeah. the turn back. Yeah, he kept the reasonable four spell hand. Yeah, I mean, that, spell hand. yeah that, I mean, that Bright Pack Alpha was pretty integral to his game plan. That's what it looked like. But that Life Beam Zombie really just messed this up. And it's basically unblockable, too. So, yeah. in for three, if that's going to come in, it's going to knock Ford down to 17. We'll see what the follow-up is here for Kali. Wall of Swords? It's a pretty good follow-up. It's going to get tapped, but... Wall of Swords is pretty big in this format. Tap down. Going to knock Kali down to 16. J Ford plays a 4-4 Bailoff on the land. Bailoff's pretty good there. Big draw step. 
Yeah. Like, that, that thing is just huge. Kali does have a classic in his hand, but he only has two swamps in play right now. You see him pull planes forward. Now he pulls a classic in his forward, so does he want to cash that in right now? That was supposed to be the death gaze bass unless he can cash in. Two. Or cockatrice, two flop. Three. Five six to master. master. Yep. Okay, Wall of Swords is going to handle this bail off for now. Jason Ford down to 14. Ford draws his card. That may have been enlarged. Maybe. Shove it. Right. Well, he's consulting. <laughs> 11 minus 5 is 6. So he get in, he get in, he'd get in for 6 points of damage here and kill that creature. roll of swords out of the way. He doesn't have anything else to do. Yeah, so he's going to cast in large. They're debating if they want to lose to Celestial Flare, but yeah. I think Jason's just like, yeah, we're dead to that card. Yeah. Anyways, no matter what we do. I agree. And I agree with that assessment. Like, you're not going to be able to beat it at this point. We, have we seen someone cast that card today? I think I've seen it once. once. Yeah. Yeah. Shocked. I'm a little surprised too, yeah. especially because it's common. We haven't seen it like any of it. Swamp. We've seen so many quag segments. There's just not a lot of celestial players. Swamp the draw for Kali. Does have knight does have nightwing shade in his hand. Yeah. Also has a cockatrice. Yeah. So enlarge did a nice job clearing out the wall swords, but there are some much bigger problems in Ford's future. Jason's still on a clock from the zombie. Mm-hmm. Debating Sangir Vampire too. Wow. Definitely it's some really like, nice it's options. A rip. Yeah. It's a full rip. This is a good place to start, though. Get in yeah. for three. Looks like. I think I play. I don't know what they've seen in Jason's deck, but I think you should play the Cockatrice. Yep, they they're going to go with the Cockatrice and keep representing a double white spell. Ford's going to draw a card. Well, they now know that he doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. But uh, the reason I play the Cockatrice is actually. Um, I don't know if they've seen any of the Fray on the Weeks. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Or Hunt the Week. Yep. Yeah. Hunt the Week. Plus one, plus one. Kill a guy. Jason Ford. Drop pacifism. pacifism. Okay. Still in this game. Runner, runner, nothing fun. Or in for four. Yeah. Gonna put Kali down to six. Yeah, so. Play of planes. Yeah, I mean, the Cockatrice trades if it fights, but if it gets pacified, I'm just gonna hang out. Is Kali gonna stop attacking with that Life Bane zombie yet? No way. I, I, no. I mean, I, I can't find a good reason to. He's gonna come across for three. Yeah. Gonna knock four down to eight. He's not dead on board at all. Four. Looks Might like the shade. I'm guessing Sanger. Five. There's your fifth mana. There's your Senior Vampire. All Representing right. the trick that we clearly don't have. Jason Ford draws. Does he want to fight? He looks happy. Battle you. Yeah, can't block fast enough. There's your trade. And that's a pass to turn oh. back. But he, he has to trade the Senior there. Absolutely. And Kali draws a Doom Blade for the turn, and that might seal this one for for Kali's team. That really might do it, because now he's going to be able to get to play. That Nightshade post-combat does keep a black up this time for the Doom Blade. Four draws three lands, and is going to concede the game. So the team of Kyle Rose, Stephen Kali, and Bruce Kali, the brothers, will be moving on tomorrow. A great run by Jarvis Hugh, Jason Ford, and Drew Levin, but they come up a little bit short. The four seed. Rose, Kali, and Kali will be moving on tomorrow to face Murray, Visco, and Liao. Four versus three, so Murray, Visco, and Liao will be on the play tomorrow. All of the matches. Yes.